Thank you very much. Uh, good evening and welcome to the Town of Arsenal Waterways Committee meeting on February the 27th, 2024. Present for the Town of Arsenal Harbor Master Brian Taylor, Principal Assistant Pam Spider Cohen, Deputy Harbor Master Jay Horn. We have committee members Peter Cross, Greg Egan, myself, Paul Everson. Um, and uh, before we get going, I just need to uh, note that tonight's meeting is being recorded and broadcast on Channel 18 in the town of Barnstable. And in accordance with Mass General Law 30A, Section 20, I must inquire if anybody else is taping this meeting and to please make their presence known if so. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, going to the agenda for tonight's meeting. I'm going to act first act on the minutes for January 23, 2024. Has everybody had a chance to look at those? I'd make, so, uh, make a motion to accept those minutes. Um, sorry, I was speaking over you. Who was that? Was that Greg? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Paul. I, I actually spoke over you. Yeah, I was uh, making a motion to approve the January 23rd uh, minutes as presented. Okay, thank you. Second. Second. Thanks, Peter. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Aye. next is a uh, notice of intent Sandcastle Family Holdings, <laughs> LLC, 1332 Stewart Street, Winter Park, Florida, with the address uh, of the applicant at, at 749 South Main Street in Senneville, parcel number 012, lot 001. The applicant proposes to replace an existing vertical mortared stone seawall with a vinyl bulkhead and to repair and raise the lawn 18 inches. Existing stone wall will be removed and the vinyl wall will be installed within the footprint. Okay, Jay, do we have anybody present for that? Hearing none. Well, uh, this property is located on the Centerville River, kind of halfway in between the Bumps River and the Dan McCarthy Landing. I did have a chance to look at the uh, blueprints. They are staying within the same configuration that the property is in right now. You can see the stone, the stone wall right here. Um, I have the blueprints available if anyone on the committee would like to see them. I personally don't see any uh, hazard to navigation here, but I'll let the committee speak to that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm familiar with that area. I think the uh, channel is on the opposite side of the uh, of the river from the property. It's pretty shallow in front of there, and they are staying within the same footprint. If I understand. Yes, that's correct. Okay, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, committee members, uh, Greg. I, I, I have no problem with it either. Okay, Peter. Approve. Okay. This is All Gary. Right. This is Gary, I approve also. Oh, hey, Gary, how you doing? Good, thank All you. Right. That's okay. Let me mark Gary present as well. Gary, if the, did you hear that? Any thoughts on that one? No, it's fine. Okay, so we're all in approval of that. Okay. Uh, next, we have the Town of Barnstable, uh, 367 Main Street, Hyannis, at 40 Haywood Road, Centerville, map 186, lot 56, Haywood Road, McCarthy Landing. Applicant proposes to relocate and reconfigure floats to improve the accessibility to the public facility and perform maintenance to the pier's structure components. Several configurations have been considered. Project will meet regulatory compliance and make improvements for the public pier. And I'm um, looking, to, do we have any uh, any footnotes to that, Jay? I'm, I'm looking down below here. I, I don't think it. anyone's here to represent the project, but Brian Taylor does I know, know I, I, about it. So I can speak up. Uh, yeah, and Brian, Brian's uh, familiar with the project too, but uh, I'm uh, here on behalf of the town, uh, Jeremy Packard from both Infrastructure and Environment. Um, and uh, we're doing the engineering design and uh, currently moving in, moving into um, permitting for this project. Jeremy, do you have any plans up on your computer right now that 
you could, we could I, have make you a co-host. I do. Yes. Yep. Host Perfect. disabled. Yeah. Make me a co-host up there. Jay, can you just make him a co-host? We can share. Yeah. Yep. Just give me a second. Okay, Jeremy, you're all set. Stop other screen sharing. You want to continue? Yes. And then screen two. All right. You guys see that? Yep. Cool. Um, all right. So, and now it's gone and now it's back. All right. So the intent of this project was to uh, address um, <clears throat> regulatory compliance and um, accessibility uh, concerns uh, at the existing town landing. Um, and so in order to, um, to achieve those goals, we, <clears throat> we uh, surveyed the area and uh, documented <clears throat> existing water depths. The issue is that the water depth under the existing dinghy floats, dinghy docks, uh, is insufficient. You need at least 18 inches um, <clears throat> of, of clearance under the floats at all uh, during all tides. Um, so in order to achieve, uh, to achieve that, we have moved the proposed floats um, seaward uh, closer towards uh, the channel. Um, and we've really moved this incrementally until we got the exact point where we achieved that water depth, um, just to try to keep the, the available water sheet open to the maximum extent practicable. Um, you can see that you can kind of see the outline of the old floats here. So the intent was to maintain the length, uh, the usable length, um, as much as possible without encroaching uh, further to the east and closer to, closer to these floats over here. Um, so we maintained um, the usable length, but we we added um, some additional width on this float, um, the closest float uh, connected to the pier. And that was to, uh, in order to be able to receive the new gangway. Uh, right now, the floats, the dinghy docks are accessed by um, a ladder, a timber ladder. Um, so that'll be replaced um, with a gangway to, um, uh, to uh, help accessibility. Um, and so the gangway, the, the float is widened to allow to allow the gangway and still allow room to kind of maneuver and walk around, around the floats themselves. Um, and then as part of this, we also relocated the, uh, the Harbor Masters float. Uh, we turned that 90 degrees parallel, close to parallel to the channel. And that was to uh, allow a little more room in between, um, allow some uh, accessibility between the floats. Um, and we also, we're going to reuse the existing gangway that was, uh, that, uh, is attached to this float already. Um, so one new gangway, one reused gangway, we're going to reuse the existing, uh, Harbor Masters float time, turn at 90 degrees, um, and then new floats for the dinghy dock facility. Um, so that's the, that, those are the major components of it. Um, the, the floats will be, um, uh, pile supported, pile anchored. Um, we have some minor, uh, framing modifications to the pier itself in order to be able to support that new gangway. Um, and then we also took the opportunity um, to propose minor improvements to um, the pier itself. There's some, there's some decking issues that are going to be replaced, just minor uh, repairs. Um, we're going to um, uh, install pile caps, uh, pile caps on top of all, uh, all the support piles. And then we're also proposing uh, low profile solar deck lighting. Uh, kind of along that same uh, accessibility theme that we've got going. Um, and then finally, we're proposing a reconfiguration zone. Um, so this just allows the town to move these floats uh, how they see fit within this zone, uh, kind of marked out by this dash line bounded by these four coordinates that we've provided. Um, and that is bounded uh, landward by the water depth. That's what we've got on this side. Uh, it's close as you can get during all tides uh, to stay in compliance with regulatory concerns. Um, seaward, it's bounded by uh, the edge of the channel um, to the west by the by the pier, and then we um, <clears throat> we offset the extended uh, the extension of this property line here, this northern property line. Uh, we extended that into the water and then offset that twenty five feet, and that is to stay um, in compliance with DEP guidelines. Uh, small small harbors and um, piers. Uh, and that's the project. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions from committee members? Uh, yeah, this is Greg. I, I have a, a question on the <clears throat> reconfiguration zone on the on the edge facing the channel. Uh, 
if you were to bring the uh, structure out, boats would stick out further than that, or is there language that uh, that that everything is inside that line? So, good question. So the the timber harbor master flow, or as is proposed on here, the harbor master flow used to be actually a harbor master slip. We don't really use it like that right now. It's currently loading unloading zone only. It's no overnight tie up. Uh, so potentially in the future, if we were to reorganize these slips in such a way, that would become an issue, but I don't see that at this time. Okay, um, thank you. Does that answer your question or? Well, um, I, I, I guess I just uh, haven't seen um, come before the Waterways Committee establishment of reconfiguration zones. And so, um, you know, those are, those are serious considerations relative to the future as well as riparian lines with with neighbors and things like that so um yeah i was uh, i i think it's a great great project but i was just uh, wanted more clarification on the uh, yeah i mean that was that was my request um because if not and we did we found out that this configuration didn't work or we need to make modifications to this location we'd have to go back to get a new chapter 91 license so this allows us to make some moves in this location if, if we need to. Okay. I'm curious about the uh, reconfiguration zone on the, what looks like the east end. It looks like it's potentially overlapping with an existing float. Yeah, so those existing <laughs> floats are mooring permits as, as we permit. Um, it's a very shallow, there's only, I believe there's only one mooring permit holder at that location. Is that correct, Jay, due to the shallow water on the other side? Yeah, that's right. We only have one uh, boat on that float. Again, it, just the reconfiguration zone, what you see for the, the piers and floats and the timber pilings would uh, stay put. We could relocate that float in the future if we needed to. Okay. <clears throat> Thank right, you. Uh, any consideration on dredging in the future inside of the, uh, the float, the dinghy float, where uh, it's I guess basically where the old float was, uh, just to try to get some more depth in there. No, not at this time. Um, no consideration for that. If we were to dredge, I would say it would be in the proposed reconfiguration so location or along the boat ramp. Okay. So it's not question, just um, Sorry, I have a question about the gangway and the small vessel storage. We have a lot of small vessels that are stored down there. So are you going to be able to walk next to that first gangway? How many feet are between the gangway and the edge of the float? So it's an eight foot float. So yeah, again, originally, because we're limited with space here, we had the gangway in the middle of the float, but that limits access to one side or the other. So from the usage that mm -hmm. we currently have with the gangways, which we only allow mooring permit holders to use, I think we have enough space for here if you come down and go to your left to access that left side of the float as well as the end and all the way around until you come to the gangway again. But yeah, that's a good question because originally we had the gangway in the middle of the float, but that kind of limits access to one side or the other with it being, having a gangway in the middle. So we moved it all the way to the right so you could come down and go to the left and come all the way towards the fixed pier or you could continue down the float. Okay. <clears throat> So I think yeah, to answer your question, Jay, I think there's enough room and enough space here. If you can compare it to the other, um, the other floating dock that we have, which is held by mooring permits, I think there's enough room to get uh, dinghies around the end of the floating pier as well as along the the larger eight eight foot section floating floating dock. All right. Thanks. And the. Uh... The dinghies themselves, how are they assigned to the float? So right now we have small vessel decals at the Harbor Master's office, which was a new thing we um, put into effect about three years ago. It's been great. That way, if a small vessel goes washed up somewhere, we can identify it. Um, so in this location, last year was our first year that we required small vessel decals at um, McCarthy Landing. This year, we're going to do the same thing, but it's only going to be for mooring permit holders. So our staff can actually go down, run that small vessel decal uh, on the back of the, the small vessel and find out who it is and compare that to the mooring permit holder. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? 
All right. Hearing none, uh, let's put it out there. Who's in favor of this? Uh, what's that, uh, Peter? I approve. Okay. Uh, Greg? Approve. Okay. Gary? Approve. And myself as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, the next we have morning appeals. Kevin O'Malley requests a transfer of his mother, Patricia O'Malley's mooring permit to her grandson, Ryan P. O'Malley. Take it away, Jay. Um, I wasn't dealing with this directly. Pam, I believe, was in contact with the grandmother. Is anyone here to speak about this? Are the O'Malley's here? Yeah, I think Kevin O'Malley is present. Yeah, my name is Kevin O'Malley. So what are you trying to do here, sir? My father originally had this mooring, Dr. O'Malley. We've had it in the family north of 60 years. And uh, when he passed away in 2012, it was going to go to me. And uh, because I'm legally disabled, I couldn't have any assets in my name. So we're asking... We're humbly asking if uh, this can go to my son, who's a Coast Guard licensed captain and plans on using it, you know, keep it in the family. Okay. All right. Question, Jay. Uh, where is the mooring and what size? 250-pound mooring. It's right in front of Sullivan's house. You go out, as you're leaving the Katua Town Pier, you go out the fairway, it's the last one on the right. So it's in the Katua Town Dock mooring field? Yes, sir. Okay. So normally, as you know, we only allow transfers to immediate family members. It would have to go from the mother directly to the son, husband to wife, uh, brother, sister, et cetera. Uh, we generally don't skip a generation. Um, so you're not even able to put this in your name just for one year and then and then transfer it to your son the, the following year? Correct. Okay. Okay, what size uh, vessel are we looking 25 at 25-foot center console, 25-foot Boston Whaler. Okay. Has that there was, been there was a morning right along? Yeah, go ahead, Peter. What's what's been on this mooring previously? Forty-one foot Gulf Star catch. Okay. Uh, Jay, has the mooring been just regularly uh, renewed every year? Yeah, to the best of my knowledge. Again, I I wasn't prepared for this one tonight, so I'm sorry. Um, Pam was helping. Uh, this family out uh, before the meeting. So, I, I, you know, I'm going to remove myself from this. As the morning officer, I have to deny it, but that's why we have the Waterways Committee. I'm going to go with whatever you guys decide here. Um, historically, we, we have made exceptions before. We've allowed transfers when the, the son or the daughter is deceased. We've allowed a transfer to a grandson before, but uh, again, I'm going to leave that up to the committee tonight. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I do recall that we have skipped the, the generation. I believe it was the, uh, the grandson taking over um, where a, a family member that would have been in line to take the mooring um, uh, has some health considerations and not being able to accept it. So I'd be, I'd be okay with, uh, with this family transfer. How does everybody else feel about it? I'm okay with it. Okay, Peter, thank you. Greg? Yes, I, I would be in support of it. Okay, thank you. Gary? Yes, support. Okay. All right, so we're all in favor of it. So, uh, Jay, we would, uh, we would say yes to this and just have Mr. O'Malley uh, and the family fill out the appropriate paperwork. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, gentlemen and ladies and Pam. Thank you. Just, just for, on the record, could we just make sure that we have the birth certificate for both um, Mr. O'Malley and his son on record when we have the transfer, that's all. Yeah, Thank that's you. a great idea. Thank you for your time, Mr. O'Malley. Yep. Thanks, Kevin. 
Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay, old business, uh, mooring regulations. Nothing new here. Uh, as you know, we, we put these regulations through to legal after our workshop. Legal signed off on them. Uh, we're kind of stalled out with the town manager right now. We're waiting for his signature. So nothing new to report on the mooring regulations. I know Brian wants to talk about having a workshop in the future for the marina fees. Um, yes. Brian, do you have a date for that? Yeah, so I, I can talk a little bit about the mooring regulations and where they're at. Potentially, we may have to do another public forum type of meeting for the regulations, um, although I'm not 100% sure, so stand by on that. We should have an update next month for you, um, but Jay's correct. It did go to legal. Uh, potentially, again, it may need another public forum type of meeting, whether it's in person at town hall. I'm hoping maybe we can do uh, the marina fees at the same time. So. With the, with the marina fees, I want to do a couple uh, public meetings as well uh, to talk about the marina, marina fees. And, you know, marina contracts start May 1. So I think a good time would be around the start of the contract. Um, I know the May 1st is the start. So I was thinking uh, potentially doing it before uh, the Waterways Committee meeting. On is it May twenty first? Is that the last? Is that the third Tuesday or the fourth? Pam, are you sure? Are you sure what uh, what date the May meeting is? Is it the fourth or the third Tuesday? So that meeting was one that I believe was changed because of the holiday. Yeah. Yeah. It's the schedule is in the folder. I don't have it with me. Okay, so I was thinking the twenty first. Um, starting a little earlier and doing a public forum or a workshop meeting for the marina fees to go over it looking to hold two meetings in 2024 um, before i go forward with a fee schedule and this is really to, per the request of the town manager's office we're trying to be open to everybody so they can have time to buy in potentially doing zoom workshop and then doing one in person uh throughout the summer or towards the end of the summer so at this time i propose before we'll call it the may um waterways committee meeting a six o'clock start to go over the, the marina fees. And then we'll pick another date, potentially in person uh, for the marina fees to allow individuals to come in person. Yep, hey, Brian, I uh, I just pulled up the calendar. It is May 21st, at least that's okay. what was on the uh, list for us. Okay, perfect. So six o'clock, May 21st for a workshop for the marina fees. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next up, we have new business. Jacob Angelo, 46 Meadow Lane, West Constable. Fish trap weir application. Do you want me to uh, go first, Brian? Or? Sure, sure. Yeah. Jacob, uh, thank you. I'll, I'll go first real quick just to give them a little bit of a background. I did send an email today to the Waterways Committee members with the actual application as well as Nantucket Fish Weir's application. Uh, historically, we've had Nantucket fish weirs um, in Nantucket Sound for, I don't know, you, Paul, you may know, or Peter, you may know uh, more than me about the length of time the fish weir has been here uh, since I've been here. So over 10 years, I want to say closer to 20. Uh, what I can tell you is the application itself needs to be approved by town council. However, before going to town council, uh, the director and myself want to have waterways buy-in. Um, so we have uh, Jacob Angelo here, which is applying for a fish wears permit. He is going to use the same exact site as Nantucket fish wears, although his request is for a different time period within the ap actual case, uh, uh, application. Excuse me. Go ahead, Jacob. Uh, yeah. Hello. My name is Jake Angelo. Um, I, uh, worked with Kurt, uh, this year learning the fish wear business and, um, uh, I want to, explore that uh, opportunity. Um, I actually had a waterways committee last night for Yarmouth and uh, they uh, approved um, one off of uh, Point Gammon for the spring uh, because the ones in Barnstable are still permitted um, for Kurt Martin um, for, the, for the spring. I'm trying to get them in the fall starting midway through August, start setting it up and then end, uh, I think it's at the end of November, we have on the application. 
you know, I think that's about, uh, is there any questions or anyone, everyone familiar with it? Jay, could you allow me to share my screen so I can actually share yes. the application, please? Sure. Okay, you're all set. So the application uh, is from August 15th to the end of November. Like I, like I said, uh, we also have a current uh, fish weir permit in effect, and that runs, let me, let me just zoom in here. That runs March, April, May, and June. So this would be the existing locations, although four separate months, August 15th, through the end of November. So, so uh, it, that's a little confusing. So, uh, traditionally, um, by experience, uh, the weirs hadn't been there during the high boating season. So, uh, does that mean that uh, it'll be in during the uh, traditional boating season, except for the month of July? And then halfway through August. Right, so it'll be in place through June and then uh, out July in two weeks in August and then back back in uh, for August, September, October. Correct. Okay, thank you. All right, Brian, is this the, uh, now the, the location where it is now, I'm, I'm familiar with the fish weir that's been out there for quite a few years. It was Mark Simonich from Chatham. Is that the, is that the same permit holder that has it now that one's April, May, and June? Kurt, Kurt bought that business from Mark. Who has okay. it now? And I believe that's usually out by Memorial Day, or it, it was in the in the past. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Like I um, said, he's currently permitted uh march april may and june but he may remove it before then yeah yeah i i have a problem with it going in in august um i actually investigated a, a death there when i worked on the police department running the marine patrol the boat hit hit the fish where at nighttime and uh there was a, a fatality as a result and the the markings of these things i mean they they are very very large i don't know if people are familiar with it very very large poles that are, are jetted down into the sand and they're quite thick and they're quite sturdy and uh they the markings on them although they were legal uh, and conforming they were minimal just with a, a yellow light taped to one of the uh, the piles uh, one of the uh, so as Greg mentioned, you know, the traditional boating season, basically, particularly July and August, um, and that's heavily traveled or, you know, frequently traveled. Um, I just have a major concern about that being out there that time of year. The, my experience with the, the Chatham fish and uh, the Simoniches was that the weirs were out of our water even if the permit said uh, April, May, June, um, they were out much earlier before we had the, the, the 10, 12 weeks of, uh, of heavy boating in that area. So I don't, uh, without having further information, I don't think I would be in support of this, uh, not, not during the August. Can I uh, speak about, about the markings of the fish weir? Yeah, go ahead. I planned on marking it heavier than they have been marked in the past with more radar reflectors and more lights. Because I, I myself working the weir <clears throat> was impressed or surprised, I guess you should say, at how little markings there were. So I personally was already planning, and that was one of the concerns of Yarmouth. But, um, and then in respects to like uh, the traffic areas, the one particularly off of Hyannis. It was tucked in between the Calmus Jetty or, or the Hyannis Port uh, breakwater and then the Hyannis Port like Boulder Field. 
there. So anyone coming out of there, especially if they're traveling at night or in low visibility, would typically, you know, just even with the no matter how drunk you are coming from Baxter's back to Oxville, like, you know, you you would you would route give that ample leeway. Um, you just wouldn't cut that close because of the rocks. Is there any uh, further? Um, it's not clear uh, on this chart wh wh where these are supposed to be, uh, where where they're proposed to be. There's um, one right off of Hyannisport. Oh, there's I, a I know where they are, but I'm, I just mean specifically on this drawing. Can somebody point w uh, yeah. where they are? Oh, so there's two. So can you see my pointer here? Yes. So here's 255R. Can you see the line that goes towards the number four? And it has 254R, same thing, the line which goes towards the four. So those are the two locations. There's two separate applications in front of it. Okay. Do you want to see a different map? So you can, I mean, it does, I know this is a little close. This is actually the same map that uh, Nantucket Fishwares uh, sent it was in front of waterways last time as well as town council. So it is a little confusing, but um, we can take, we, I can get another map if you'd like. I, I, I just, uh, I mean, it's an important installation and, and, you know, certainly want to support uh, the, the fishing uh, community. Um, but um, I, I, uh, I know this area pretty well and um, the scale and I know, and I've passed them before, but I don't think the scale of the placement is um, is sufficient uh, on this. It, it it might it might be that they're really out of the way, and it's an unfair representation to uh, where the where the traffic zones are. So, it, um, if it was on a chart, for example, that that would be very helpful to me. But I'm I'm not asking for that. But I'm just stating that I don't think this is very clear. Okay. I I don't. I, it doesn't make any sense to me. <clears throat> The, the chart you're referring to? Yeah, it's just, it's just a little difficult to follow. I think that's what they're like Right where your cursor is right there is go over to the, a little bit to the right. Or a little bit like go in between that dark spot right there. And it's like pretty much like if just move. Yeah, right there is probably the leader is in this dark spot and it goes down maybe towards just past. Do you see that light spot in the middle of the dark spot? Kind of, like don't zoom in too much. No, no, you're you're too inshore. Um, Basically, your cursor would be one of the leaders, like the start of the leader, the more inshore. And if you just went straight down roughly, but more slightly at an angle, it's in that deep water bowl right there. And if you see like the, when you come, that whole, yeah, exactly, that whole bowl that you're circling. Now you got, if you come out of Hyannis and you're going to go west, you can see that real shallow water, which is basically a boulder field off of Hyannis Port. And you can obviously see the Hyannis Port break water. And it's kind of just tucked inside of that right there. And the second one would be. Yeah, if you let me move, I gotta move your um it would kind of be I think almost where it's hard to see because the contours on this are a little bit different. Um, but it's I think right around where your cursor is right there, going at an angle. I would I would zoom out a little bit. Yeah, more. I just want to see if there's an actual marking. It's inside Collier's Ledge by like I want to say. Yeah, it's right in this location here. Yeah. And this year we fished it until about June 20th is when we took it out, which is already a heavy traffic part of the year. And there wasn't, there hasn't been any issues. You've been fishing it pretty much that late for the past few years, or as long as I've known him. So let me just ask this. Traditionally, there have not been uh, fall weirs put out at these locations, correct? Well, I think traditionally, like in the past, 20 30 years i don't think so but traditionally in the fact of like this fishery yeah that I, I, they used to fish them all year round was there a fish weir off wiano recently 
Yeah, the, the, that was one, yeah. One, of, one of the ones I was working with him this uh, spring. And we took all that out uh, around June 20th was when we were pretty much wrapping up. Because that's a, that's a heavily traveled small boat area in there. Yeah, but they're also, um, with that being said, in it being out there that late, you in, it, in uh, being out there for many years that time, you've never once had a problem, you know, recent, in recent history, other than that one. And I believe that incident that the death wasn't that off point gammon. No, that was the, uh, the one that the Weano had. Was it the Weano one? Yep. Yeah, well, in the past, you know, when you when you go out there and, you know, if you're heading to Hyannis, it's tucked into the shore enough that you clear it like you wouldn't. It's not in the normal way of traffic for Hyannis to Osterville. If you're going to hug the beach in a little whaler off of Douse's, yes, but, you know, it could be marked properly. And it it is there all the way into the meat of June, into the beginning of the summer without incident for years now. Um in like in, in in as far as the marking goes, I'm absolutely for whatever kind of uh terms the town wants to put uh for additional markings beyond what the state requires. Okay. Um uh, Gary, you have comments? Uh, Gary, you're muted. Gary's muted. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I just, it's just the timing with the the heavy traffic and the small vessels. That's you know, I'm trying to get a grasp of that. That's all. Do you boat out in that area at all, sir? Uh, no, I haven't. Not in a long time. I'm I'm on the north side. Yeah, well, like it hasn't, like I said, it ha they've been out there for the past several years. In in, I would say June's pretty heavy. I know it's not Fourth of July weekend or anything, but you get they're out there when the squid fleet is out there running around in the middle of the night. Those are out there, and there's not an issue. And you got plenty of drunk people out there, and plenty of people that are unfamiliar with the area without incident, and they're out there. It's like a city out there. I don't know if you've ever gone by Craigville at night at that time of year. What's the uh, the state minimum requirements for marking? It's very minimal. I, I It was so minimal, I honestly couldn't even tell you because I was going to go above and beyond. It was like one light at the end of it. Um, and I think a couple radar reflectors every like a couple hundred yards. But I was thinking more of like every 50 yards. Or so radar reflectors with maybe hundred yards or less a light. Just one light. Yeah, I mean a pretty bright, nice light. They're pretty expensive. The ones I was looking at, the you know, uh, solar panel on it and everything to charge it. I you know, I would have a hard time agreeing with this prior to Labor Day. Well, the, I it, currently it has been. Have you been out there like during the spring at all? Not too much in the spring, but certainly in the summer. And you've, you've, you've got an August 15th, uh, which gives you three weeks of heavy use. And the I usage think. drops off significantly after Labor Day. I can vouch for that for sure. So you think in September? Yeah. Okay, so September 1st? Well, I was thinking Labor Day. We're more like the, the Labor Day probably i don't know what it is this year but somewhere between the first and the and the seventh or eighth <clears throat> that makes more sense to me yeah. just just because the traffic yeah but you know i and i and i understand what you know but again you know back to what happens in the spring with all the boats out there more boats are out there navigating at night in the spring than any time of year in the fog in the spring with no issues, you know? So in the college kids, when basically the, the summer here wraps up. I worked at Oyster Harbors growing up for seven years and that summer wraps up when the kids go back to college, basically at this area. I mean, of course there's tons of boating out there through November, but- um, Boy, you're on 37 water 
Uh, I don't think that there's going to be like a huge reduction by taking it off like an extra two weeks of fishing time. There's there's significant boating out there in September. Um, yes, there is, and 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 in many ways, maybe even more than more than June. Uh, but I I think we're kind of off track with the with the with the discussion uh, relative to um, you know like placement of these these things. Everybody has their own experience uh, on there. Um, from from my perspective, I I think if um, I'm not trying to create more work, as I said before, but it's not clear where these are going to be. And um, if we had a better graphic of that, um, uh, that that would help me come to a, um, a decision. Um, I'm particularly uh, um, respectful of uh, Mr. Everson's experience out on the water in that area, and uh, reminding us of the of the fatality. So, you know, the the core charge of of this group is is um, safety and navigation, and and um, I'm hopeful that we can come to some some sort of um, arrangement to uh, to help Mr. Angelo, but um, I'm not prepared for that uh, this evening. Okay, thanks, Craig. Uh, perhaps you know we could get a Latin long as far as, and I didn't realize there were going to be two of these on the application. Um, certainly, the one tucked in the Hyena Sport Rocks, you know. Uh, would be a little bit better than the uh, the other one there. But if we could have a Latin along on the start and the end, so we'll get the length, the duration of the, you know, the how long this would be. Um, the markings, again, what's required and then what is going to be proposed above and beyond what the markings are uh, required. And um, I would suggest we um, not act on this tonight and ask the applicant to consider that, get them marked on charts with those things. The Latin long at the beginning, the end, the length of it, the markings of it, and, uh, and the total duration of, of time, uh, August 15th through, you know, when, uh, November 1st or, you know, something we can kind of really have a hard look at. So would you like to maybe continue this for the next uh, month's meeting? Uh, pending yeah, on yeah I think that would be good. You know, come back with a little bit more information as to just a, you know, a line, you know. Yeah, I'll make a much better chart for you guys to understand. Yeah, and that'll uh, kind of give us a little time for, you know, research too. Um, we may have some further questions. Like I say, I did have experience with those. Um, so uh, we don't want to, we don't want to say no um, without some more information. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. So, Thank you. Just Thank real you. quick, and and so Jake, um, when he does make that chart, I can send it to the waterways committee before next meeting, so you can view it, uh, just like the applications that I sent, which they do have the Latin long and all the information you're requesting. But if you actually want a visual on the chart or on a chart. Um, yeah, I'll send that along when J when Jake sends it to me, so you guys can review it before the meeting. Great, that would be appreciated. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Okay, thank, thank you. you, sir. Thanks, Jake. Okay, next up we have correspondence town manager hearing for renewal of aquaculture grant for Thomas Reichevi, twenty four Alberti Way in Centerville, uh, that to be held on Wednesday, March twentieth held by a Zoom. And also in Congress, we have uh, Brayman Surveying and Associates LLC, led to the Town of Barnesville Conservation Commission, got Highline Cruises request for emergency certification on the Mass Wetlands Protection Act for maintenance dredging of its self slip in Hyannis Sarva. Okay. Um, just for the harbor master, is that something that's basically so the main yeah, it looks like, like the maintenance dredging is going to be an emergency dredge uh, uh certificate. It's probably going to go in front of Concom sometime in March. It looks like uh Brahmin Serving and Associates didn't uh request an extension in time, 
So they have to do an emergency. Probably won't come back to waterways. I have no issues with it. It's maintenance judging on the south ferry slips in Hyannis Harbor, but I wanted to make sure waterways was aware of it because I was just made aware of it today. So I put it on here. Again, it's probably going to go in front of CONCOM, um, you know, next month, potentially before our next meeting. So if you have any yeah. issues, you can comment now and I can forward them to CONCOM. But again, it, it's just going to be the maintenance dredging of the South Ferry Slip in Highness Harbor, which is at the terminal. Okay. All right. Uh, any members have any problems with that? Um, no. no, no should, should, we, should, we, um, should we vote on it? That, that we don't have a problem it will, will, will that be helpful no i if you'd like to you can i i didn't really get any recommendation from um the conservation agent that that's what you should do but you're welcome to if you'd like to well it would it would make sense that they would want to dredge down there i was watching the the uh, dredging work today at at uh, the town piers and you know they're pulling a whole lot of gunk out of there i don't know where they're dumping mm -hmm. it but there's a whole bunch of gunk coming out of there, and, and and the High Line docks would not be any different than the town docks. And I would, I would um, encourage us to to uh, help them to move along to get that done. Thanks, Peter. And there's, that's in the uh, that's a motion then. Yeah, and I, and I would second the motion. Okay, all in favor. Cross aye. 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 Okay, all in favor of supporting the High Lines uh, emergency certificate for dredging of its South Ferry slip. Thank you very much. Next, Harbor Master report. Uh, yes, sir. It's uh, mooring renewal season. I'm up to my eyeballs and mooring permits right now. Uh, just a friendly reminder that tomorrow is the 28th. You have until 4.15 p.m. tomorrow to get your mooring permit renewed or at least get the check here on time. Um, we do allow late renewals for the month of March, starting March 1st to March 31st. You can still renew your mooring, but you're going to be paying an additional uh, $50 to do so. So tomorrow's the day. If you don't want to get hit with that late fee, get your permit down here tomorrow or upload your documents online. We're approving them as soon as they come in. We'll take care of you. But tomorrow's the day, guys, 4.15 p.m. tomorrow. So I'll just add I'll just add to that, Paul, because I talked a little bit about dredging. But before I do so, Jay is already in um, 2100s with permitting moorings. Am I correct, Jay? 2138. 2138 in, in February. Um, I don't know if everyone remembers, but I used to permit moorings into April. Um, so he's almost towards the end. He'll probably be permitting moorings in April, but not the bulk that I used to permit. So, um, you know, our online renewal system has its pros and cons. It's, uh, you know, it's definitely allowed us to be more efficient in the renewal process. It's still a lot of work. There's still a lot of paperwork to go through. Um, but I just wanted to thank Jay because I, I remember going through all the mooring permits and it's, it's um, you know, it's quite difficult as well as Pam because she's involved in the day-to-day -day helping our customers when they come in. So I just wanted to say thank you. Um, Pam's but, our but, unsung hero. <laughs> <that's right. laughs> so um, going into dredging, uh, we have two dredging projects occurring at this time. One at Bismore, which is A and B dock. And as Peter said, I was watching that dredge sediment come out today. Uh, I know Jay was as well. And I was like, wow, it's mucky. Uh, so we do have two dredging projects at Bismore. There are dredging A and B dock. Um, and then we have the county dredge, which is coming into the Katuit cut that is going to be uh, dredging the Katuit entrance channel coming into the Katuit cut. That dredge sediment is getting dumped uh, on that next Sampson's Island towards the west end where, uh, excuse me, towards the east end, although it's the west end cut. <laughs> um, and that dredge sediment will be covering some of the breakthrough that we had in the uh, previous storms. Um, trying to think what else. The dredge sediment that's in Hyannis is actually not being dumped. It is going, get transported by a barge to New Bedford uh, and then offloaded dewatered, offloaded into a truck and then to a yard. So it's not getting um, dumped out in the Nantucket Sound or anywhere near. So 
Um, other than that, we are busy with a number of different projects going on and getting ready for springtime. We'll probably pivot right from uh, mowing permits into getting the atons ready and permitted and rolling on to the next part of the season. So we're ready for uh, the summer. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, Matt is uh, not anticipated by the chair. I have none. Do any other committee members have anything else they'd like to bring forward at this time? Nope. And hearing none, thank you all. Uh, entertain the moment, the motion to adjourn. I just had a quick question, if you don't mind. Uh, this is Jake Angelo. It was about the um, dredging in Centerville for Brian, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, how far, like, how far are you guys dredging that channel all the way out? So we're not dredging the Centerville River at this time. Although oh, sorry, sorry, the, the, I said I might get to it. So where the channel is currently marked, we're dredging all the way up into the cut, but it's going to start at the outer entrance, which is out into the sound. Off the top of my head, I don't know exactly how long, but for where we have it uh, permitted with the Coast Guard for the Atons. Yeah, like, oh, like, like, okay, yeah, because that's all the way out to the sound. So it, it hasn't been dredged in many years. No, I know it's really shallow, and I just it was like, it's, it's going to be all the way that whole shallow strip all the way out to deeper water. Cool. That's correct. We we requested to the county dredge to start at that location from the sound and work our way in because we've identified that that area is shallow, and again, it hasn't been dredged in many years. Uh, sure. So that's kind of why we have our attention on this location at this time. Thanks. That sounds great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Move we adjourn. Second. All right. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Gary, and all. And uh, and I second what uh, Jay is saying about uh, all the help with Pam and the other staff members. You know, had difficult time of year with all those morning permits coming in. So keep up the good job, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> all right. We'll see everybody uh, next meeting on March twenty seventh.